Greetings and welcome to the next episode of Our Links Podcast Project. My name is Martin Wilsey and I'm your host. Tonight we're going to talk about writing screenplays. Um, to lead this story is going to be Shay. She'll take it away. Hello. Yes, welcome. We are taking kind of a, a pivot away from novelism, talking about uh, screenplays. And it might be an even sharper pivot for my fellow panelists here because most screenplays that end up being produced anyway by uh, new writers are not going to be sci-fi and fantasy because they are much more expensive to produce um, with effects and all that. So um, it might be even more foreign territory for my panelists, but there is a lot of common ground too with writing uh, screenplays and novels. And there's a lot of good ways that you can uh, flex certain muscles as, no, as a novelist, if you try out a screenplay. And we'll talk about that a little bit. Um, one of the reasons that I'm leading this uh, discussion is because I am a hobbyist filmmaker. Um, I have a, a comedy web series, which Jeffrey uh, starred in for one episode. And I have um, a, a foreign film, actually, that is subtitled in English, which I directed in the Czech Republic in summer of 2018. Um, and I, I was able to secure that directing position because I was also the author of the screenplay, which was chosen to be produced by the, uh, the Film Academy of Miroslav Andrzejczyk. So that was a, a really big honor because the Czechs um, take uh, screenwriting and filmmaking very seriously. It's a, it's a huge part of their culture, um, especially Czech animation. Uh, which is much darker than Disney, but we won't go into that right now. Um, so, uh, with writing a screenplay, a lot of people get spooked by the formatting and by how do you present a screenplay, because it's not, it's not like you just open up Word and start typing away your thoughts, which is how some people begin. There's their, yes, <laughs> Jeffrey is very, uh, very, emphatically against that. How some people begin their, their yeah, novelism is they just open word and they start writing, right? Um, but with screenplays, you have to worry about um, the structure, which would be, for example, starting a scene with, you know, all caps, heading, saying, you know, interior, Marty's house, day, uh, and then going into the characters. Um, sometimes you'll have little parentheses under a character's name saying how they should say something. For example, hesitantly, and then Marty says, uh, should we go in or something like that? So there's all sorts of uh, little rules with the format that, that you must follow. One good tip would be to use a, um, a software that helps you format this. The one I use is called Trelby and it's free. It's not the best. Um, it's, you know, it's a little, it's not quite the most intuitive software. It's a little, a little sloppy in some places, but it's free. And uh, that's what I've been using, and it gets by, it gets me by. And I know Marty had a couple others he uh, was going to recommend. I have a couple of so yeah, so please software don't. for screenplays. Please, um, please. One is Scrivener. That's actually okay. the tool that I use for um, writing novels, and it has templates that takes the formatting hassle away. You don't have to worry about the indentation level. You don't have to worry about fonts or other things. It, it helps you with all of those um, rules. And they are hard and fast rules. Be, you know, be certain about that. Mm -hmm. Another uh, software I got. Keys and everything. Yeah, yeah one actually, of the other software I have is called Final Draft, mm -hmm. which is industry standard. Um, it, but it costs $250 to, uh, to purchase. Right. So um, I recommend Scrivener. It is the 95% solution. If you get serious about writing screenplays, trust yeah. me, so you'll you have a, a, a copy of Final Draft. You have a tiered system here, right? You have the, the best, which is the, the Final Draft, which is the most expensive, then Scrivener, and then what I use, which is Strawby, which is free. So, you right. know, think about your budget it's, it's and what you're using it for. Scrivener is about 39, 40 bucks. Yeah. Yep. There you go. Yeah. Mm -hmm. and, and But I, I will say that I have, I mean, as some of the writers know in the group, uh, I did write a screenplay in early 2020 that was slated to be produced, but then COVID struck. Uh, so never went anywhere and it's still languishing, but I used Scrivener for that. And Scrivener was very easy to use in terms of just typing something and then had it hitting a hotkey to say, okay, this is dialogue now. 
hitting another hotkey and saying this is now scene description. Hitting another key right, and this is right. this is now the setup for a scene. Yeah, and you know, read some scripts. If you're not sure what we're talking about at all, yeah. you're like, what the heck are you mean by like formatting? Read some scripts and you'll see what we're talking about as far as the structuring of scenes and dialogue and all of that. And you'll and you get a feel for it and see what you have to accomplish. Yeah, yeah the, there is a, you know, a wealth of scripts available for free on the yeah. internet. Mm -hmm. um, I have probably 300 different scripts. I, in particular, was collecting scripts of specific movies that made over $200,000 at the box office. Yeah. Um, 200000 or 200 million? 200 million, sorry. Um, so, <laughs> categories. And I can talk and, all about And it's that. really interesting, too, because um, screenplays are actually a lot shorter than uh, novels are. Oh, yeah. And I have uh, I've considered, and I may for my next big project, do it as a screenplay first. Because one of the features about screenplays are they're very dialogue intensive. They're, mm -hmm. The dialogue's really important in screenplays. And if if you're going from an outline to, you know, to bump it up, it's almost like outline to, okay, I'm gonna do the dialogue first. Mm -hmm. And then you have it in the can when you, uh, you know, are marketing your book, if you're shopping your stuff around. Um, right. but I, I, would say, I would say your screenplay though, you're your, your movie length screenplay is 120 uh, pages and has pages. about as much content as a yeah. novelette, you know. That's right. Well, the, the, uh, the, uh, the conversion rule is that, that uh, mm -hmm. one page of, of script equals about one minute of screen time. Mm -hmm. So you're aiming for about, I don't know, 90 pages, mm -hmm. 90 uh, pages for your feature length. Minute yeah. yeah. 90 minute movie, 90 pages. Yep, exactly. 80 to 90 is to so, I would say that there's three characteristics to scripts that are really designed to strengthen a writer. Um, and one Marty already mentioned is that it's dialogue intensive. So if you're working on improving and sharpening your dialogue, writing a script is a great way to do that because the dialogue has to carry and it has to sound very authentic. So that that's one thing that, that is great, scripts are great for. And Another I will thing, agree with you. Well, oh, go ahead, I, please. I will also agree with you that uh, I think you could look at almost any movie, even, even some of the unsuccessful movies, and the dialogue in those movies is much crisper and more accurate uh, and more interesting than the dialogue I read in a lot of science fiction. There you books. go. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So that's number one. Um, number two is that script writing forces you to pay attention to your action. So usually uh, action words are in all caps. Um, and yep. that, that really forces you to pay attention to what is actually happening. So talking about active voice versus passive voice, you're always active in script writing. And so focusing on that action to the degree where you're really putting it in caps and you're really focusing on A does this to B and the result is C, um, very direct, uh, very strong uh, lessons to be learned there. So, so you have dialogue, uh, focus on action. And thirdly um, is with your dialogue, as I said earlier, sometimes script writers are, are tempted to put, you know, the character's name, which say David's going to speak, and then below the character, a parenthesis that says how they're going to say it, such as hesitantly or, you know, um, loudly or with confidence or whatever, and then there's the line of, of, uh, of dialogue. This is actually discouraged, or, or you're encouraged to use it very sparingly yeah. as a screenwriter, because that is the job of the actor. The actor is supposed to interpret that dialogue and and be able to express that in a way that they find rings true to the scene. Well, and also, that. well, I'll just say quickly. I mean, yeah. keep in mind that also there there's the writer's script, right. and there's the producer's script, and then there's the director's script, right? Director, which, which all emphasize things that they need to be aware of. Exactly, producer. and the director likes to have the prerogative to add those parentheticals themselves. Yeah. The producer wants to know what props are in the room and what what's the what's the scene, the stage scene, and all of that. But when you uh, discourage the use of those parentheticals, you're also discouraging authors who laden their writing with adverbs and laden them with, you know, they don't, they don't just let the action and the dialogue fall. They have to uh, contextualize it, which doesn't make for very strong writing usually. But there's also, there's also a challenge there, which I find kind of interesting. Because there's also, if you look at it, if you, if you meant that character to be sarcastic, to be saying something sarcastically, 
or to be something hesitant, saying something hesitantly, um, you could, if you wrote that properly, even without the parenthetical, you could make that obvious. So that's mm -hmm. actually a, an interesting challenge to exactly. actually make your dialogue carry more freight. And, and that's why I think it really helps with uh, training authors. And, and um, there, there, but there is one parenthetical that you will see very commonly, which is the beat. The momentary pause, uh, allowing, uh, the act, uh, allowing the action to stop for a moment mm -hmm. as a moment of contemplation and then continue. Yeah. Yeah, it's yeah. definitely important to actually get out there and, and read some scripts. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It's uh it's really interesting reading a script at the same time that you're watching the final film. And uh it I it cracks me up sometimes. I had the script for the Big Lebowski, and my feeling was, oh, these people ad lib most of this movie. You know, you can't use the F-bomb that well by reading it off a script. Well, that was not true. Every line that was in the script was on the screen. Yeah. And that cracks me up even more because oh, yeah. that is good writing as far as I'm concerned. Oh, yeah. I love that movie. That's oh, yeah. a very good script. So I encourage people that are interested in screenwriting but maybe have more of a background um, or experience in writing, it is novelism to really think about what is your purpose behind choosing to tell this story as a screenplay rather than to tell it as a novel. There are definitely pitfalls that you need to think about. And one of the, one of the biggest ones is that, you know, when you write your own novel and maybe you try to get a publisher to bite or something like that and they don't bite, you still have the option of self-publishing it. But when you write a script, it's, you're not gonna be like publishing that on Amazon Kindle. So you really have to think about, you know, am I, am I writing this to get it picked up by a big, big movie producer? Am I writing this so I can produce it locally, like on a small budget? Like what, is it, what really is your purpose in writing that script? Because it's a very different journey to take a script to Hollywood than it is to take a novel to press. Yeah. And so my, my thought on that is, uh, I think that I am better served by writing my stories and, and maybe writing these these screenplays to, to, to learn things. Um, I would love to have something that I do made into a movie. And mm -hmm. I find it interesting to think about movies like say The Cube or things like that that could be done on a really cheap budget. And so the right. challenge for me is, can I write, for instance, an interesting science fiction premise set in the modern world that would be cheap to produce, not have too many characters in it and mm -hmm. be something that, um, a small group of talented uh, amateurs or professionals could produce on a, on a small budget. Uh, I would find that very rewarding. And I, I'm, I'm planning on trying to do some screenplays along those lines. Yeah, but I, I will say that I, I do hang out in a film production group. In fact, the one that I wrote the screenplay for. And one thing I learned is that's kind of interesting is that movies in the low budget range, the Blair Witch type, uh, you know, tens of thousands, yeah, they're kind of glutted. And the movies in the hundred millions and the, the, the really blockbuster films, that's, you're never going to get that much money. But the 10 million, one to 10 million films, you might be able to find enough sponsors to sponsor it. And those are the ones that are really the, the hot market to do. Just well, the, main, the main reason I became interested in screenwriting is I had um, some interest expressed um, by producers in some of the stories that I had written. And the first question out of their mouth was, do you have a screenplay for this? And I didn't. And of course the talks uh, fell through. And in particular, the example I'm talking about was a um, story that I wrote um, called The One Stand. And it's only about 110 pages long as a novelette. And, um, but the story size and content is cinematic. It'd be um, a good standalone film in of itself. So I have in my queue actually to do a screenplay version of that existing uh, uh, existing story. And that'll be fun. And it'll help me learn the tools better. And um, then I'll have something else that I can uh, shop around as a screenplay. That's, uh, mm -hmm. That could be fun. That would be very fun. Yeah. And, and as editor, as editor, 
I could say I honed, I helped tone down the story that became a, a screenplay. And, and that's and right. A, right. There you it go. Was, I'll put it on your resume. Yeah. Another writer in That'd be cool. Maybe but I, I, I will. Go ahead. No, I, I just say uh, one last thing in terms of going from novel to screenplay is one thing, but the time of the Kevin's book that I'm working on now, it started out as uh, since sliced bread, an episode of Project Bonusphere, written as a true 50 or 60 minute teleplay. And what I found when I wrote that teleplay is that the characters are the only thing that conveyed. Almost nothing. Some of the major plot points in the first act convey are, are from the screenplay, but overall, I just started fresh because sometimes a screenplay is enough to sustain a novel. It can work the other way. Novels can be condensed down to a screenplay, but it's hard without adding lots and lots of stuff to make your screenplay into a novel. Actually, my, my, my favorite example, my, my favorite example was uh, uh, Captain Horatio Hornblower, a uh, movie starring Gregory Peck. Um, it's actually a trilogy of books within a longer series. Uh, but the thing that resonated to the, to the director was the love uh, story between the, the, the captain and, and the lady um, that went through the three stories. So they, uh, they adapted that plot line into a book, uh, sorry, into the screenplay and the movie. Um, and you can watch that and still assume, based on the timing and everything in, in it, that everything else still happened. Mm -hmm. so it's a really classic, uh, they really did well. So many right. times have changed, but um, some authors that I know, and I guess I, I won't name names because they're still in production or still whatever, um, you know, who are mainstream published, who have had uh, their books turned into movies or bought and are in production to be turned into movies. One of them told me that, you know, production uh, producers and directors really don't want the author around on set, you know, when, yeah. uh, when they're their book is being adapted into a movie. And so I don't really often, I'm trying to think of movies that I've seen recently that were like adapted from a book. I think it's it's maybe the exception rather than the norm that an author will write their own screenplay uh, yeah, for their that adaption. Is true. And I Usually think that's- authors don't have the cut. The I think top. in many ways that's healthy um, mm -hmm. because you can get you know a, an outside perspective as Jeffrey was saying, condensing it or mainstreaming it to, uh, to film. But then you have situations like Rick Riordan, who wrote Percy Jackson and the Olympians, and his, yeah. his book was turned into a movie. And he is so disgusted by the movie's outcome and by what they did with the story that he openly uh, condemns it and makes fun of it. Hmm. And, and he has published on his blog emails that he, he, he sent back and forth with the screenwriter explaining why this was not working as a story and what they needed to do um, to defend that he had nothing to do with, you know, the outcome. And, you know, I'm not going to, I'm not going to give any opinions on this, but I would say I wasn't a huge fan of the movie and I'd read the book. Mm -hmm. um, you know, I thought that it missed a lot of the, the good stuff uh, in, in the book. Um, but this is an interesting relationship to consider as authors if you really are serious about maybe one day having your book being turned into a movie, how much are you willing to let someone else um, appropriate or change or, you know, um, use your original material and make it into something a little different? How much are you willing to let go in order to see? On well, the that's the thing. You have yeah. to decide. Yeah. And you decide and you get it in writing and you get what signatures oh, on that stuff. You get signatures. If, but I will uh, say... You know, if somebody wants to pay me a million dollars for my story, hey, you know, and do whatever you want with it, man. Yeah. I'll, I'll be in Bahamas, you know, not, not watching it, you know. Right, right. But you're probably not making it. <laughs> and, uh, you know, you could actually have a contract where you have, you know, creative control. Well, um, I mean, yep. It uh, usually costs money to do that. Well, um, if you're J.K. Rowling, you can get that. If yeah. you're, if you're Dave But Keith, if you're just some dude, you know. Well, I mean, sometimes you'll see authors um, like listed under the credits as producer of the film, and that is something I believe yeah. that is like a negotiated position. Mm -hmm. like, that is know, a negotiated position. Yeah, that yeah. means you are working with an in a Hollywood agent, probably yeah. an IP um, lawyer as well. Mm -hmm. um, that is part of the contract, and that starts from the very moment it's optioned. 
right. right all the way because your option is basically a baby contract that expands out if it's actually a uh, green lit right, right. It's, it's worthy to mention right. options because mm -hmm. a lot of novels get option and don't get produced into a movie yeah and, and then they go to never, neverland um, yeah. I, in the conversations i've had with producers um they say that your novel will be more likely get option if you actually have a screenplay of it already in the can that they mm. can uh, pitch. Yeah. Well, that makes sense because you're, you're, you're taking away, you know, labor that they have to hire and, okay. you know. If we haven't actually explained what an option is for, for the readers. Option yeah, do that. Or viewers. So an option basically says, hey, I'm going to pay you X amount of money for some length of time. It could be a year or a couple of years. Um, and during that, you know, and during that time, you won't uh, option, you won't give it to anybody else. And I'm going to try to put put a deal together to make it into a movie. Um, oftentimes, there's the the ability to renew uh, for another option year, et cetera, et cetera. So you could have somebody that, that gives you an option of, you know, they pay five thousand dollars to option your story for a year, and they might do that for a couple of years until they decide they can't put a deal together. It's still free money while somebody yeah. else is trying to put a deal together. But it is, it is literally a deal that kind of says, if it does get greenlit, the following things happen. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, so but look, as always, my movie. advice is have a contract attorney yeah. re review, the, review the option agreement. Absolutely. And, uh, but, but enjoy it. I mean, have fun with it. it huh. you know. I, I, I just want to say one thing, which is, Let's say you're the screenwriter. You're a professional screenwriter, like my good friend, Josh A. Kagan. He's a screenwriter. He wrote the Kim Possible live action movie. He wrote Band Slam. And the thing is, he, the writer, a Hollywood writer, he couldn't access the set. Now that was because of the writer strike at the time. But yeah, even then, you know, a writer doesn't necessarily, the, the professional Hollywood writer doesn't necessarily have access to the set. Even the Hollywood writer could be just, here's the script, deal with it as you like i mean there's no guarantee so I one of them. Was, but there, there was an author who basically said um, this is what it was like to work with hollywood you take your book you throw it over the border uh, to to, to uh, california mm -hmm. and you forget about it you just make mm -hmm. sure you cash the check as fast as you can yeah maybe it turns into a good movie maybe it doesn't but it's out of your control for the most part right. Right. that's usually the reality so it's, it's a fair thing to bring up for our readers I will say though, oh, a funny, <laughs> an interesting story was the uh, Fantastic Four story, you know, in terms of the option being released at a certain period of time and trying to get the film done in time, the Corman film. And then, you know, that, that was an interesting story. I think it all goes back to deciding your purpose and writing that script. Is it just to have some fun and flex some of your skills and learn some stuff? Or is it, or do you really want to bring it to Hollywood or do you want to produce it locally? Um, these are all things to think about. Um, I, I will say that one of the funnest things you can ever do at a writing group is do a roundtable reading. Oh, <laughs> yeah. With your script and give people roles. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I will so, add uh, that, that Hollywood and in general, and especially streaming platforms, are more hungry for content than they have ever been. True. Yeah. So and many networks. Hollywood has not done that well with science fiction. They've done better, I think, with science fiction when they have based it on uh, successful books and series from real science fiction and fantasy authors, mm -hmm. whether it's Lord of the Rings, Shadow and Bone, or or you name it. Android's Dream of Electric Sheep and uh, Blade Man Runner Castle, Blade Runner, yeah. No, but now they, they actually have Android. It. It's a new series on uh, HBO, uh, not HBO. Marty, Marty, do you have a closing comment? Right. Yeah, well, I was just going to say, um, uh, just keep in mind that. There is also writers groups for screenplay writers. There are. There's actually I, I actually belong to one that I really enjoyed um, where I used to live. Um, it's too right. far away to, to drive uh, infrequently up there now. Yeah. But just like there's specialty writers groups for science fiction and fantasy or anything else, memoirs, there's a writer group for screenplays. And I encourage you, if you're interested in writing screenplays, to uh, hook up with one of them, because not only do they know how to write screenplays, they know the industry a lot better. We're sitting here talking about it, 
And we don't know all the levels. We don't know how to find a producer to uh, look at your properties. We don't know how to get your script into slush piles. And we don't mm -hmm. know how any of that works. So um, it being in the right writer's group for screenplays, if you're actually really interested in writing screenplays, I highly encourage that. And, and I will just add that put some time in some of the, the, the actual filmmaker groups, meetups too. I mean, you can learn a lot by just joining, as I, as I mentioned earlier in the podcast. Uh, sometimes you can be a writer and meet some actors that would like to be in your film and meet some people that may know the people that want to sponsor your film. You know, you can learn a lot and you never know. You could be the writer, actor, and director of your screenplay. Yeah, that would be my nightmare. Yeah. <laughs> Nobody wants to see me act. I'm not happy that to note, teams. This was a great episode discussing screenplays. So Another finally structured. Get out there and go be the next Queen Eastwood. I don't know. <laughs> Make it happen. Okay. Thanks. See Thank you guys you. next week.